Okay, well, I waited like 10 minutes. Um, I just want to go over uh, free energy. Since we have looked at uh, enthalpy, which is the transfer of energy as heat, and we looked at entropy last week, which is the uh, degree of randomness of substances, we can now combine the two because um, natural processes are driven by both entropy and enthalpy. Now, the universe tends to favor uh, processes that are towards the lowest enthalpy because uh, lower enthalpy means uh, more stable, they have lower energy, and also towards the highest entropy or randomness. When these two processes or these two factors oppose each other, the dominant factor is going to decide the direction of change. Now to predict which of the two factors will be dominant, a function has been defined to relate enthalpy and entropy at a given temperature. This is called free energy. Um, I do believe the G comes from Gibbs, uh, from Henry Gibbs, who I think is the first person to identify. But basically what it's going to boil down to is um, a formula to be able to account for both enthalpy and entropy in determining whether or not a reaction will be spontaneous or not. So just like everything else that we've been studying, you cannot measure enthalpy directly. You cannot measure entropy directly. You can only measure a change in those two. Same thing goes for free energy. You can only measure a change. So you can either read out that whole definition or just go with the um, formula which is free energy or a change of free energy, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Now you might be wondering what these little degree symbols are. This just means in a standard form, which you don't really have to worry about. Okay, so the little, um, little degree symbol is for their standard states. The product of T delta S and the quantities delta G and delta H have the same units. It is really important that you make sure that your, um, the enthalpy and the entropy are both given in kilojoules per mole. Quite often, uh, entropy is given in joules per mole because it has a tendency to be a much smaller number than enthalpy. So just make sure that you, um, watch out for that for any questions that I might give you where entropy is given in joules per mole instead of kilojoules per mole. Each of the variables can have a positive or negative value except for temperature, of course, because temperature is measured in Kelvin and the lowest Kelvin value is zero, which is absolute zero. So there's four possible combinations of terms. I think I mentioned this right at the end before Christmas break, but I want to make sure that I go over it again so we all understand um, how we use and manipulate this equation. So you can either have both enthalpy and entropy being positive. So obviously this one would be not favored, but delta S positive would be favored. You can have a positive delta H and negative delta S. Now a positive delta H is not favored, a negative delta S is not favored. So that means this is absolutely not happening. For the first one, positive delta H is not favored, but positive delta S is favored. So then it would depend on temperature. The next scenario is a negative delta H or a positive delta S. In this example, nature favors an exothermic reaction. It also favors an increase in entropy. So this combination would absolutely be spontaneous if delta H is negative, delta S is positive, then absolutely delta G will be negative and the reaction will be spontaneous. The last one, a lot like the first one, is negative negative. Now negative delta H is favored, but a negative delta S is not favored. So then it really, again, depends on temperature. Here's the equation. If delta H is negative, so this is negative, 
and that's negative. Then both terms on the right, oh, sorry, that's positive. So a negative minus a positive, everything on the right-hand side is negative. Both factors contribute to the process being spontaneous. So delta G is always negative. A negative number minus positive, this whole thing is going to be negative. Negative delta G is spontaneous. If delta H is positive and delta S is negative, so this is a positive, a positive minus a negative, that's always going to result in the right-hand side being positive. And if you just look at individually, delta H being positive is endothermic, that is not favored. Delta S negative, a decrease in randomness, not favored. So delta H in this case will always be positive. So the reaction will not be spontaneous. I do believe this is in your textbook if you had a chance to bring those home. So if you have negative delta H and positive delta S, delta G is always negative. So this is always spontaneous. If you have a positive delta H and negative delta S, it's never negative. So it's never going to happen. Now the in-between parts come with both of them being negative or both of them being positive. So again, if you have, uh, let's see. Right, so if delta H is negative and delta S is negative, so we have delta G equals delta S minus, oh, sorry, delta H minus T delta S. If this is negative and it's minus a negative, that means that this half is going to be positive, which means you want to keep the temperature low, okay? Because negative delta H is favored, negative delta S is not favored. So you want to keep this value high, this half of the equation high, and you wanna keep this half of the equation low. So you need a low temperature for both of them being negative. Oops. Okay. All right, so here, if we look at entropy, okay, get rid of all that. If we look at entropy, everything up here is a gas, so that's all equal, but we have two moles of gas on the left-hand side, and we have only one mole of gas on the right-hand side, so this is a negative delta S. That would indicate that it's not favored. So in this example, delta S is equal to negative 0.1207 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. That is a large decrease in entropy. Delta H for this, uh, for this example is negative 136.9, highly exothermic. So this means it's favored, but this means it's not favored. And that's why you have to result uh, depending on temperature. So in this example, enthalpy change dominates. And we're looking at standard temperature, which is 298. And we get negative 101.1 kilojoules per mole, which is spontaneous. So basically what I would ask you to do, um, which I'll do a, a few examples uh, at the end here is in general, I will give you the values of delta S and delta H. And uh, I might ask you what temperature will this be uh, spontaneous? Or I might give you the temperature and just ask you if it's spontaneous. So basically you're just using this formula and you're calculating. And if delta G is negative, then it is spontaneous. 
again, what that means is that the reaction will occur naturally by itself without needing any uh, energy input. So another process is manufacturing syngas, which is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And this is a starting point for making uh, chemicals like methanol. It is an endothermic reaction with a delta H of positive 206, but entropy is also positive. So the enthalpy is not favored, but the entropy is favored. Again, making sure that the units in kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Again, at room temperature, this is going to result in a positive delta G. This tells us the reaction will not occur naturally at room temperature, even though entropy is favorable. So you end up getting plus 142 kilojoules per mole. And again, any positive value for delta G is not spontaneous. So here is a sample problem that we'll go through together. And then I have a few that you can do on your own. For the reaction, NH4Cl yields NH3 plus HCl at 298.15 K. Delta H is equal to 176 kilojoules per mole. And Delta S is equal to plus uh, 0.285 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Calculate delta G and tell whether this reaction can proceed in the forward direction at 298.15. So easy peasy, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. I've literally given you every value. So delta H is plus 176 kilojoules per mole. And you're going to subtract 298.15K times plus 285 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. This Kelvin cancels. So, oh, calculator. Oh, I took it all back to school. Crap. All right. So here's my phone. Um, so you've got 176 minus, and then bracket 298 times, oops, I forgot my decimal, that's bad. Uh, times 0.285, and I get plus 91.07. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So because delta G is positive, whether this reaction can proceed in the forward direction, Nope, it cannot because it has a positive delta G.